if I use Sprout Core and I'm trying to deliver something to a mobile device, how does it get delivered? I mean, I know there's native apps, and I don't know what you call, you know, I can have something in a browser that's like a website for mobile, and then you can have these things that you drop on the home screen, like, I don't know if there are industry, industry terms for those things, but if I'm using Sprout Core, which of those can I actually build and deliver to a mobile device? So you can build all three of them. They're built with the same basic technology, but it's mostly in how you package it. So when you create an app with Sprout Core, it's all JavaScript, HTML, CSS. That goes into the web. Cool. You can add it to the home screen, and then you get what we call a home screen web application. That's on iOS. Not every platform does that. And then you can also package it in PhoneGap, and then you can put it in the app stores. And uh, one really nice thing about this approach that I think a lot of people should be thinking about as they're doing more mobile applications with web technologies is that if you use the same basic technology for both the browser and the native app version, you can actually link between the two of them. So you can kind of get the best of all worlds. You could have an app that's on the web through an M. website that anybody can use. And then, you know, with a press of a button, you can bounce them over to the app store and install it. And uh, since for the web in particular, on mobile, latency is your number one enemy, being able to actually install assets on your device is the number one thing you can do to make it faster. So um, there's a bunch of ways you can do it. Going through the app store is probably the, the nuclear option. Um, and then you could use things like app caching uh, to you know, make sure just your app, your web page is fast as well. Yeah, so that, Jason Grisby talks about the importance of that a lot, about um, even if you are going to produce a native app, um, it's also important to keep in mind that people are going to visit your website through the mobile browser because people are tweeting URLs, emailing URLs, exactly. and so um, that's very cool. What you're saying is um, if you use something like Sprout Core, if people are in an email or tweet and they click on a link, they'll get an accelerated experience in the browser, right. but then you can point them to the native app also going forward and certainly offline and stuff like that. And it's a, Yeah, exactly, it's the same experience. It's actually really important because um, if you talk to people who've built a lot of apps and are trying to build businesses on mobile, uh, what a lot of them will tell you is, you know, native apps are great because they're actually just a touch away for the user. And so you get, um, you know, you get it, it's really sticky, people spend a lot of time in those apps, it's really great, but not very many people will find it by itself because you're in an app store, right? You're yeah. competing with 500,000 other developers. And the web's just the opposite. The web, people find it, they, they, you know, the traffic on most mobile websites for a lot of companies just going through the roof. The trick is to tie those two together so people find your app and then they use it. And that's really like, that's the breakout experience for mobile. That's when you're really doing something that's brand new that, you know, I think is very exciting, right? It's the kind of things that Netflix and eBay and Facebook are doing. And um, that's what I think should be the new standard. And, the, you know, the web is really the only technology that lets you do that. So that's why I think it makes a lot of sense to bet on that stack. Yeah, I think that's really important. You know, of course, I have an Android. I also have an iPhone. I use them both all the time. And when I'm thinking of something I want to do, um, I guess just you know because I grew up with the web, I normally search for the website. Right. And I go to the website first, and it doesn't occur to me to hit the app store first, looking for a native app version of that content or you know company or whatever that I'm looking for. Yeah. Well, and if you don't know about it, right? Like if you're like, I just need to find movie listings, but you don't know what to go look for. A lot of times you're going to go to Google. Yeah. And most people end up going to the app store when the web's too slow. Yeah. So don't make the web slow or make sure that when you're on the web, you've got a direct connection to the app store. You'll get lots of people using yeah. your app. And I, I'm, I appreciate that you mentioning uh, if you go search on the web, going to Google. I didn't want to <laughs> be the one to call that out. But as long as you brought up Google, um, just a minute ago you mentioned building these home screen apps. And I was kind of surprised you said specifically iOS. Um, but I know on Android I create, um, you know, I drop, you know, links on the home sure, screen. Yeah. So is there something different about Sprout Core that right now for home screen apps it's more geared towards iOS and not Android yet? Or No, not in particular. What I meant by that though is that iOS has a very specific 
home screen web app mode where links on an Android are bouncing you over to the browser. Oh, okay. So it's it's not it's a it's an actual like third way of running apps on the iPhone that's right. different from like Android. You're, there's either you're in the browser, or you're native, right? So the two are connected. I am so thankful that I have friends like you who can <laughs> explain all this stuff to me because I I you know I've been doing a lot of testing the last week, and this is exactly what I saw is I'm. Um, particularly focusing on uh, mobile web apps, and I'm seeing on the iPhone when I'm running these tests, you know, when I'm on the Android, they're taking me into the browser. When I'm on the iPhone, some of them are taking me into mobile Safari. Some of them are taking me into this other experience right. that's outside the uh, native browser. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, and there, there's a meta tag you can put in your web page mm. that will determine that. Um, and, and so that's why, for example, there was recently a little bit of a controversy with the, not iOS 5, but the last update to iOS 4 that included a new faster JavaScript engine in Safari. And it turned out that if you were using the web inside of a native app, you didn't get that faster engine. And also, if you added it to your home screen and it didn't take you into Safari, but it was this other mode, you didn't get it. And the reason mm. is because it's not Safari. It's, a, you know, it's a literally this app that launches that runs a web view that has your app and it's a lot like fluid on the Mac, right? But it's built right into iOS. Oh. So that's yeah, I mean it's definitely not it's hard to understand that there's this third thing. Most people it's very detailed, right? Yeah. <laughs> and um uh you mentioned a minute ago manifest files. So I was just at Mobilism over in Amsterdam and I was surprised that, you know, so here's a collection of 300 of the top mobile developers in the world. And I was surprised how many of them um, said that, you know, they found it very confusing to work with app cache. Yeah. That they, you know, it seemed like they read the, the uh, description of how manifest files were supposed to work and when they were supposed to be, uh, you know, rechecking things and updating things. And it just didn't seem to them as they were going through their developer experience that it was working according to the way it was spec. Um, is that your experience and, and uh, you know, helping you plug Sprout Core? How mm -hmm. does Sprout Core help with that problem? Yeah, so, um, so in general, the app manifest technology is implemented everywhere. There are a few exceptions, um, particularly we know on the iPhone in certain cases, it will uh, go revalidate that app cache when it's technically not supposed to, but those are kind of corner cases. For the most part, the app cache is there and it works everywhere. The reason it's confusing to most people is because the actual spec is pretty confusing. It's mm. really hard to do. My general theory on this is I think that um, apps, uh, building web apps in general is getting very complicated. And it's sort of like the early PC days where there came a point where you could do everything by hand, but eventually building any real app got so complicated you needed some tools to help you out. I think we're quickly approaching that point. So for example, Sprout Core has some build tools. Um, the new Sprout Core 2.0 will have build tools. We'll, we're actually separating the build tools so you, don't, you can even use them without Sprout Core. But the point is that these build tools automatically generate the app cache for you. So it's a flag, you turn it on, it does all of the right things, and um, it's really, honestly, it's worth it. Like that piece alone makes using a build tool stack, and Sprout Core is not the only one that does it, but um, you know, having something that will generate the right thing for you is really the only way to make sure it works. Yeah. Because it's very tricky. There's a lot of details that you have to get right with cache headers and URLs that's um, pretty easy to break.